Daisy and the Dishes. Like most kids her age, Daisy likes to play games with her friends or watch kids shows while sitting on their blue sofa munching her favorite chips. After all, being nine also means having few responsibilities in life. All she has to do is study hard, use polite expressions, and give Nanai a hug after school and do the dishes in the evening. Out of all the things that Nana asked Daisy to do, washing the dishes is by far the most boring and disgusting chore. Nanai, the dishes are so dirty and I don't like dirty things, Daisy complained one evening. That's why you have to be sure to wash them thoroughly and soon, dear, Nanny said. Daisy knew better than to argue with Nanai at that point. Nanai is the nicest mother in the world, but when she gets upset, her eyebrows meet and her nostrils flare up. Daisy doesn't like it when Nanai is upset. Wishy-washy, wishy-washy. The water and suds made their funny sound as Daisy scrubbed the dishes. I wish I would never have to do the dishes ever again, Daisy thought to herself. As she scrubbed the plates with a sponge soaked in dishwashing liquid, an idea began to form in her mind. The following week was Daisy's birthday. Nanai prepared all her favorites, buko salad, gulama, and kare-kare. All of Daisy's best friends came to celebrate with her and enjoy Nanai's meal. After dinner and all her friends have gone home, Daisy pushed her plate back got to her feet and prepared to go to her room. Daisy, aren't you forgetting something, dear? Nana asked. Nana, can I skip doing the dishes tonight? It is my birthday after all. I do the dishes myself, dear, but I'm not feeling well after all that cleaning and cooking. As Daisy brought the dishes to the sink, she remembered her idea to put an end to dishwashing. She hid the dishwashing liquid and sponge on the topmost cupboard shelf. Nanai, there's no dishwashing liquid or sponge in the kitchen. She called to her mother. Okay, dear. I'll just buy some in the morning. Nanai called back. Now I won't have to do the dishes again. Daisy told to herself as she went to her room to sleep. When Daisy woke up later that night, she felt round and greasy. She looked at the mirror and saw a plate. A very round and very greasy plate. I'm so dirty, Daisy said softly to herself. Wait, I'm a plate, 
Daisy nearly shouted, but a harsh voice stopped her. Shh! Not so loud. He might find us here. Who will? Daisy asked. Mr. Roach. Oh, he's a mean one, that Mr. Roach. The frightened little voice said. Who's Mr. Roach? Daisy asked. He's the biggest, meanest cockroach here. He's the king of the kitchen. I'm Forky, by the way. Who are you? I'm Daisy. Where are you? Over here, under the bed. I'm hiding from Mr. Roach. Daisy looked under the bed. There, she saw a fat, greasy fork. Hello, the fork said. But you're a fork, Daisy said. A greasy, dirty fork. So, you don't look too clean yourself, you know. Everybody is greasy because Miss Punch Viv and Mr. Lemon Sad are missing, Forky said. Everyone is talking about it right now. Come, my brother would want to meet you. Your brother is a fork too? Daisy asked. Nope, he wishes he was that good looking. He's a teaspoon. Come on, let's hurry. But be quiet. Remember, we don't want Mr. Roach to hear us. Forky led Daisy down the stairs and into the kitchen where, to her amazement, the dishes and kitchen utensils are having a meeting. We have to remain calm during this emergency. A large pot was saying in his deep voice. Easy for you to say, said a frying pan. You are not covered with grease. While the dishes, pots, and pans were arguing, a teaspoon waved at Daisy and her companion. Hey, fat bro, I see you have a new friend there. That's my brother, Forky said. He loves to tease, but he is nice. Forky waved back to his approaching brother. Teaspoon, this is Daisy. Hi, Daisy. Would like to go on an adventure? Teaspoon asked. Forky and I are planning to rescue Miss Punch Vib and Mr. Lemon Sad. Nobody knows why they are in the cupboard, but Mr. Roach is keeping them prisoner. Daisy is scared of cockroaches, and from what she heard, Mr. Roach might be the scariest of them all. But she had to help Miss Punch Vib and Mr. Lemon said, and she had to tell Forky and Teaspoon the truth. I'm scared, Daisy said softly, but it's my fault that they're locked up. I have to help them. Well, I don't know what you're talking about, but it's settled then, Teaspoon said. We are going up the cupboard and save Miss Punch Fib and Mr. Lemon Sad. And with that, the three of them started their rescue mission. Forky slung a length of coiled string over his thighs while his spoon carried a folded napkin. Daisy brought some pepper. Across the tile floor, the three of them tiptoed from one end of the kitchen to the other. There's the cupboard, Forky said. How are we going to get up there? Daisy asked. It's too high for us. Don't worry, we've got this, said Teaspoon, who surprised Daisy when he laid down flat on his back. 
Daisy became more surprised when Forky stood on his brother's feet. Daisy, jump on my face. Teaspoon told her, Come on, it's okay. Daisy closed her eyes and held her breath. Then, she jumped on Teaspoon's face. When she opened her eyes, Daisy was amazed to see Forky flying towards the cupboard. I'm super Forky, he said as he flew towards the top cupboard shelf. Forky took his string and tied one end on a peg. Then he dropped the other end down to his waiting friends. Climb aboard, he called to them. When Daisy and her friends were all safely on the cupboard, they tiptoed towards the furthest shelf. There, inside a cage of toothpicks, sat a sponge and a bottle of dishwashing liquid, Miss SpongeBob and Mr. Lemon said. But before the rescuers could take a step closer, a large cockroach jumped in front of them, Mr. Roach. No one escapes from my prison, said the cockroach. If you want to be with your friends, why don't you join them inside? Mr. Roach flew towards Daisy and her friends, his wings buzzing in the air. Forky jumped to the left. Teaspoon jumped to the right. Daisy tried to jump, but she couldn't. She is afraid of cockroaches. Teaspoon unfolded his napkin and threw it over Mr. Roach. The napkin fell on the bug, but Mr. Roach only crawled out from under the napkin. But it saved Daisy. Mr. Roach flew again, this time towards this pool. Daisy jumped forward and threw all the grains of pepper she brought right at Mr. Roach. A chew! sneezed Mr. Roach. A chew! He sneezed again more violently this time. Mr. Roach sneezed and sneezed again. After that, he sneezed some more. He sneezed so badly and so terribly that he sneezed himself right out the kitchen window, never to be seen again. Yippee! We did it! Daisy, Forky, and Teaspoon said. While the brothers feed Miss SpongeBob and Mr. Lemon sat from their toothpick prison, Daisy apologized. Miss SpongeBob and Mr. Lemon said, I'm sorry. I hid you here in the cupboard, and I'm sorry for not wanting to wash the dishes, Daisy said. Apologies accepted, said Mr. Lemon said. But you have to learn your lesson, Miss SpongeBob said. Yes, Miss SpongeBob and Mr. Lemon said, Daisy said. From now on, I'm going to be an honest daughter and I will help Nanai out in the kitchen and do the dishes. Miss SpongeBob and Mr. Lemon said, smiled at Daisy and gave her a hug. After that, Daisy, Forky, 
this point, Miss Sponge Vive and Mr. Lemon said, climb down the cupboard. The dishes will finally get washed. When Daisy woke up the following day, she ran straight to the kitchen and did the dishes. Since then, Daisy did dishes every time she's home. And she did it with a smile. Because every time Daisy did the dishes, she did it with her friends.